is uh, more inscribed angles with a tangent and a chord now. Um, so the first one is not going to feel like a new theorem, but it is slightly new just because of what it looks like, but you do the exact same thing we did yesterday. So this one says the measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a chord is half the measure of the intercepted arc. So now, like yesterday, right? Yesterday we had a line here, and we said this angle is half of its intercepted arc, okay? Today it's the same thing, but now one of those chords is not a chord anymore, it's a tangent, okay? So this right here is tangent, meaning it hits only at point C, but it's still gonna be that this angle is half of the arc. So your arc right now is this arc. So notice the arc ends at your vertex now, but it's the exact same thing, okay? You take that arc, you cut it in half, you'll get this angle. Okay, um, same thing over here. This is a tangent. This angle is going to be half of this arc. Okay, um, so let me just give you a for instance here. Let's say in this first circle, arc BC is, what do you think that is? 100 degrees? We'll go with 100. Okay, if that arc is 100, then angle C is how many degrees? 50, 50 degrees, okay? Um, if I tell you this angle in the second circle is, we'll call that 130, then how big is arc BDC? 260. 260. So you would double the angle, you would cut the arc in half. Like the same kind of yes, so very similar to yesterday, it just looks a little different because one of them is tangent yeah. now, okay? Okay, um, so take a look at this. It says AC is tangent, meaning this B is your point of tangency, okay? Um, it says if the measure, this is supposed to be an arc, the measure of arc BED, okay? So take a look at what arc that is. BED is this arc, okay? That arc is 214 degrees. It says what is the measure of angle DBC. Now be careful. DBC is this one. Okay? Oh, so, oh, you can do that. No. What else could you do? Oh, oh, um, half 214 and then you do 180 minus Yeah, so you have two options, okay? You could do the first option that you guys said, 360 minus 214 um, is what? 46. Is that right? Yes, 146. Uh, 146, yes, 146. Um, so this arc would be 146 degrees. And then what do you do to find the angle? Cut it in half, right. So if you cut that in half, 73 degrees is your answer. Okay, so that's method number one. You're welcome to do that. Method number two, you with me back there? Yeah. Um, method number two is find this angle first. So if this is 214, 214 cut in half is 107. Okay, so this is 107 degrees. And now this forms a straight line. So you're gonna go 180 straight line minus 107 is 73 degrees. Notice I got to the same place. 73 degrees is our angle. Um, it's just a matter of how you choose to get there. So cut it in half right away and then do the 180 or do the 360 and then cut it in half. Okay. Questions on that? <clears throat> All right. Example two and then we're done. See how short that is? Um, I mean, done with this. We're going to do a review too. So example two um, looks like this. It says KJ is tangent. So this is a point of tangency. J is a point of tangency. Um, what are the values of X and Y? Well, isn't um, point J would make a 90 degree angle? So you do How do you know J makes a 90 degree angle? It's tangent. It hits the um, circle, and so that makes it. That's what's the rules. The yeah, which rule? I don't know. The rule of tangency. Well, yeah, well 
no, the 90, if it's your, if you're doing it based on it being tangent, you're saying this is 90 then. No. Because no. the J stands no. for Q and the No. Oh. Because it makes 90 plus 35 and subtract that from what is 80. Yes, but why is it 90? Wow. Because, because it's, it's a right angle. Why is it a right angle? It's a right angle. The, um, why? Because I said so. The symmetrical line, also known as a diameter. Right? Um, this is a diameter. Shh. Notice. Because it goes through the center, right? It's a diameter. And we said an angle, an inscribed angle that opens up to a diameter is always 90 degrees because this arc is 180. Okay? I did it yesterday. Yesterday we said that. Well, no, but I want you to not just assume something's 90 because it looks like 90. Right? You need to know that it's 90. Um, Okay, so we know QJL is 90 degrees. How do you find Y? Uh, 180 minus 90 plus 35. Yes, yeah, so 90 and 35 and Y make up a triangle. Yeah. Right? So we're going to take away this 125, and you get Y is 55 degrees. Okay, so that's mostly yesterday. Today, what we're talking about is where the X comes into play. Now we need X. How do you find X? Yeah, Luke. Um, so the 35 degree angle, you multiply it. Okay. So that would be 70. Multiply by two, right? So the 35 See the 35 here? Opens up to this arc. Okay, so he's saying that arc is 35 times 2, or 70. Okay, how do you find X? Wait, what? Come on. Wait, just do that. Rewind. 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 No, I know that part. Rewind. Yeah, why do you? Because I want you to see the X portion only. I see how okay, the comes out. You have, yeah, you can keep yours. Don't erase yours. You have a 35 degree angle here. Yes. Okay. That inscribed angle opens up to the intercepted arc. That intercepted arc is arc JL. Mm. Right? So that means arc JL is 2 times 35, so 70. Wait, arc? Oh, because it's an arc and you multiply it. Okay. Because we took the inscribed angle and we doubled it. How does that help us find it? How does that help you find x? Oh, wait, wait. Divide it by 2. Right. So now look at this. A chord. So it's 35. And a tangent. Right? You have this angle, x. What is the intercepted arc for that angle? JL. JL. So if the arc is 70, the angle is half as much, so it's 35. So angle LJK, or X in other words, is going to be half of 70, which is 35 degrees. You want to flip it upside down? Okay, look here. Let's be, let's be bold here. This is the angle, right? One's a tangent, one's a chord. The arc that it intercepts is this arc, right? That intercepted arc is twice as much as the inscribed angle. So this angle, which is our X, is half of that arc. And we said that arc, because this is 35, that arc is 70. Yes. So if the arc is 70, X is half of that, so 35. Kai. Okay. So you don't have to. You could say because this one is 35 and they share the same arc, the other one is 35 also. So if you're saying answer, you just have to 
Yeah, because they share the same arc, oh. right? If they have the same arc, the angles are the same. Okay. So you don't have to double it and then cut it in half. Okay. You can say they share an arc, therefore they are the same angle. Okay. Luke. Well, it, it might not be drawn to scale. Yeah. It's not terribly not drawn to scale, though. Yeah. I mean, if you think about like a 90 degree angle, right, this would be 90. So this would have to be 20 degrees. This would be 70. It's not the worst. Could be better. But, yes. Yeah. I mean, nobody's perfect, right? Even those brilliant mathematicians writing a textbook. Kai? Yes. Western. <laughs> yes. It's difficult but beautiful. Yes. Um, okay.